Toby had a disappointing boulder round and he wanted to come into the lead semi-finals, show what he has to offer and he did just that, qualifying in first place. He's 18 years old, it's his first year on the circuit. He did do one World Cup last year, but it's his first time doing the full circuit and he's out of there. <laughs> he's, he's gone, isn't he? <laughs> Look, Alex was <laughs> motioning them to leave. Everyone wants to get out of there. Paul. To hold round here or maybe step down here, you can see more. What you tend to find if there's a young athlete that's their first time in a final. I remember my very first Boulder final, Mina Markovic said, okay, you need to know these things. We're gonna go here, like kind of led me through yeah. it. And I was able to do that for younger athletes too. And it's, it's really beautiful that our sport is like that, I think. I didn't know that. It's a lovely story, that It one. is, and I actually said to Mina, do you remember it? And she was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she told me what was going to happen, where to go. So I was so nervous and had no idea what to do. Incredible. Well, this is the route they have ahead of them. Not really a crack, that. I know there's a lot of crack people on the internet who will really want some jamming in there, but apparently not so much. But after that sequence, we have these big volumes on the wall as it starts to go to the right. And then, well, look, fight against the pump there. <laughs> and potentially an exciting swing dyno between the two Rock City volumes in the middle of the wall. <laughs> Love the hips, don't lie. They were named that after you, Sean, after <laughs> that hip chat. Finishes in the middle, 15 degrees at the top, 40 in the middle, 10 at the bottom. And this is our top 10. 10 athletes because we couldn't count back to qualifying because there were two groups and there were some draws during the semi final. Start off with Paul Jempt, end with Toby Roberts. And good to see, uh, well, from you knowing this team so well, that uh, British athlete there in the top part of the wall. It's for here, but wow, it's something special. It really is. And there's such a range of styles between these athletes. I can't wait to see how they take on the route. And this is a man with a very unique style. Paul Jemft comes out, one of the tallest, 198 centimetres. And he uses that in a very interesting way. Height never really sort of dependent on whether you can do a route or not, but it changes how you look at it and how you attempt certain moves. Definitely, and it sometimes it sometimes can change the sequence of holds that they use, maybe not feeling comfortable in a position that was intended by the root setters. I asked the root setters when we were reading it with them, do they consider how tall some of these athletes are? You know, Paul and Adam, both taller, like taller climbers. And they said, one of the root setters is quite tall. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I wasn't trying to say you hadn't thought about it. Um, but yeah, so they've taken that into consideration. Yeah, a big uh, diverse team of root setters here and different teams for the boulder and lead and para as well. So there's a, a lot of setters in the house at the moment. That's that crack-like feature, and he does kind of try to wiggle a toe in like a crack. He does seem to have a toe cam in there. Yeah, that will please the crack aficionados out there. <laughs> Using it really efficiently to get that clip. Yeah, and he bumps the right hand over. This is our first time seeing this as well. I suppose we're a bit like the audience, you know, we don't know what's to come, whether it's undercooked, overcooked, just right. Yeah, we feel when it starts, everyone kind of feels there's an atmosphere of almost suspense because there's so much so much unknown with the climb. Obviously, we can see it, we can read the route. We've had the privilege of being right underneath that wall. It suddenly gets a lot taller and a lot steeper when you stand yeah. underneath it. But these climbers, they... Oh. Just pull, I was just pausing there as, as Paul set up for this sideways kind of committing move. Not quite a dyno, but definitely a pounce into that Rock City hold. The hold he's got here is really positive. It's a jug. It's a jug that we would not normally see on a men's route. So interesting that they put that on. It's because that it's such a committing move to the left. It's not far, but you're coming from an insecure position, having to flick out to that hold and then land your foot on the volume just below him. He's going to spend a bit of time here, but I wonder if this hold will force them to rest longer than they want to or not force them but kind of entice them yeah it's hard to leave a good hold isn't it i mean it's something we experience a lot when you've got something good you don't want to go away from it exactly not when you've got some really spicy climbing to come yeah and it's pocket time here for paul they've got multiple pockets and there is a pocket underneath that blue shiny volume as well that's coming up on the right of your screen but this is a cool sequence of moves now and a swing and potentially a dyno over towards it Oh, he seems to be unsure of which method he wants to use. So the intended method is here for him to swing, 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 flick his hips across like we're seeing now. He's going to let go of both hands and land on that jug. Again, a very big jug. So I expect all of the climbers will have read that move because it's such a good hold. It kind of suggests that you need to 
do something special to get to it. Yeah, that's quite unique. And we see that kind of move in Boulder a lot, but not often, as you said, on a lead wall. So cool to see the setters trying something different. Definitely. And I think maybe it'll fluster some of the climbers because it's not a move they're familiar with doing on a lead rope. But that hold is so big. If they make the distance, they're very likely to hold on to it. These guys can hold on to not a lot. So I, I'd be surprised if we lose anyone there during like doing that move but it might and people might be tempted to try something different and not commit to the the dynamic movement at which point we may see someone slip there absolutely but yeah. not paul not paul yet and now he's got that uh, that pocket underneath the volume was blind and look at this is a resting position yeah the setters were expecting this they said you'd be toes above your head and then they're gonna need you're gonna need to cut your feet probably campus maybe put your feet up above your head oh and he's or got a fig four in four. as well We've got a bit of everything in this room. And a lot of figure fours this competition. True, yeah. And it's rare you see that much of a downslope in the rope. He's had to really climb downwards before going back up again. Seems a bit mean, that, doesn't it? It does. Here he's going to flick out right, and then the intended beater is for him to put a toe hook in. They've put two holds on here. I think it's kind of almost being kind to the taller climbers so they're not in a super narrow compression. But that big yellow hold you can see just at the bottom right of the screen, that is where he wants to get a toe hook. He's not opting for that, so going very different to what the set has intended, using a heel instead, starting to fight there. Yeah, he only just made that move then. Lucky the heel was in. It looks like he's kind of gone to zero to 100 on the pump scale. He suddenly, all of a sudden, just seemed to start struggling. I tell you what, look at the time as well. We've only got a minute 46 left, and he's nowhere near halfway yet. So, Paul, with some, I mean, there's just so many moves down there. He's already at 31, though, so quite a high score um, for where he is on the wall. It just shows how many moves and how much this route weaves around. We're heading into a different style of climbing now. He's going to flick out left to a crimp, hopefully hitting that really accurately if he can, but he does look pumped. He does. Drops down, holds it, but he falls and you were right. It was going then as he neared the edge of the corner and then going back left, it was a bit too far. Well, on the screens in the arena, we can see him and now you can see him on your screens too. Sean with the peace signs up, says hello to the crowd and a very unique personality. Very much so, and looking pretty chill there, you know? He kind of almost had a saunter as he walked out. <laughs> you seem surprised. that I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that man stressed, even in the most hectic of positions. Well, I seem surprised. This is the World Championship. He's in the final. He didn't have the boulder round that maybe he was expecting or hoping for. So this was important for him to, to kind of make progress in this competition. He is looking for the lead and boulder event that we've got coming up next week. So yeah, I am surprised he looks that chill, but I hope we see that come through in his climbing. Sean can be someone who is full of surprises on the wall. He can absolutely dominate around, or we've seen him make mistakes at times. So qualifying low down in this final, but that doesn't really mean so much with these athletes. The, the order does tend to shift around quite a lot because they're all so impressive. Maybe a little foot slip there, but it didn't seem to slow him down too much. Yeah, he didn't do that poor foot in the crack. It was nice to see Brooke Rabbit with Josh Larson, the, uh, the coach down. We got that shot supporting straight away, even after her own finals. Definitely, yeah. There is so much camaraderie between all of these athletes. It is so fun to be around and it's contagious when the energy is so positive. It really is. Right, what can Sean do? He is underway on his finals route hit. Now, as we know, it's a long one, so plenty of climbing to go. Sean changing the feet, adjusting into that big hold and making that look smoother than Paul did. He made that look so incredibly smooth. No need to flick out left. He's so strong. He was really high up in the shoulders. What that meant is that the crimp, the tiny crimp, felt so positive and so solid to him, which is great to know coming into this next section. He's still got loads of strength to give. It's not that that move didn't fluster him in the slightest. He didn't even go dynamically. No, he didn't. And now he's taking some deep breaths up there. I wonder if it feels surprising for the guys to have two very big jugs on a lead route, something we, we very rarely see. Now yeah, well, he used it to rest. He's going to match this long crimp. And then I can't wait to watch this again. Even when it was being explained to me, it's hard to sometimes picture it. And seeing these moves is so special. Look at this swing. And he's a bit shorter, so he didn't get that leg up to start. He's having to generate all that with just his body. 
Yeah, so a little bit like I was talking about in the women's semi-final, I was speaking about using your hips always go up and over a fence. Ideally, that's what you want to do here. You want to bring the body weight back with the hips, really flick into it, get a nice arc up high, and then land at that hold. Not kind of going through the fence, that'll make it a lot harder. If you can kind of come up and then down, land on the hold, the swing, the holding on part will be much, much easier. Sean given us a really good demonstration of that right there. He hit into that start position really quickly, started the swing, got that momentum building, and was through that move very, very quickly. It is, and now he gets that toe in above his head. We saw Paul rest almost like a bat hang up there. Reaching underneath a long way, and he hasn't got that pocket yet, I don't think. He's just on the lip. He is. I'm, I'm wondering if he needs to take his left hand down to the pocket just below in order to reach the pocket that where his foot is now. That's what he's opting to do. He wasn't tall enough to do the same method as Paul, so he needs to figure out his own way here. See him feeling around, trying to figure it out, find it. It's the first time we've seen him look flustered on this climb. Yeah, it was. He had to work for that one. He's got it now, but there's no feet, so he needs to press on through here. Now, left foot on the jib. So much uh, chalk and dust in the air. Our camera was trying to focus on the dust, not Sean, but we're back on him now. Comes out towards the right. Bumps in and crosses through. And this is where Paul started to look suddenly tired. He did, yeah, and Sean looking quite extended in that position there. I'm wondering if he needs to move his toe. We just lose him. That kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't seeing him getting pumped. It looked like he was more uncomfortable and pumped, like he couldn't quite find the position he needed to be in to utilize those holds as efficiently as possible. It's like his body position just wasn't quite right and he couldn't find it. A shame to see him come off like that and not come off fighting until a better end, but it's how competition climbing goes, unfortunately. Absolutely. Well, Sean is done. About to come out. And there he is, hits the lights. And this man, such a good boulder, I can't wait to see what he does with that middle section of the route. Yeah, our first athlete that was also in the boulder finals, so impressive, especially as we head towards the Olympic Games where lead and boulder will be one event. So, yeah. It's certainly one for the future to watch you out would, for. You would be thinking we might see him there. Yeah, his uh, mentor, Shang Won Chan, is uh, somewhere in the audience and he will be screaming up at this young man here as he makes the first clip, gets the second in. And let's see how he uses this crack-like feature. Form between those volumes, just using it for the hands. No need to do anything fancy in there. Up towards the cramp with the right hand, flicks the feet around. And that's three clips in. And it can be hard when you get clips that close together, it's easy to go past them and make a mistake. And I'm always nervous about that down low. Yeah, it can also feel a little bit annoying when you, you got like it upsets the rhythm of climbing and clipping. Um, I remember a friend of mine saying that these, these comps should be top rope competitions so we can just see the climbers fight as hard as they can and not have to clip. But this is lead climbing. They do have to make those clips in order. Um, that's the rules. So that's why we see them make every single clip. Absolutely. Them's the rules, and he's going towards the big jug, and a bit similar to Paul, more of a flicky way into that. Yeah, he went much more aggressively than Paul into it, but in a really good way. It was very efficient. He threw his hips to the left really confidently and landed in a perfect position. Yeah, so good work from Dohan Lee. He got through that first move. He'll rest here as we see him, but not for too long. Won't be that pumped at the moment. Yeah, a really quick shake for him there. Didn't want to hang around on the jug. And now bumps the right hand across the long crimp blocked mainly to prevent heels sometimes also to make the athletes have to be accurate and precise with it yeah it looks like this one here is forcing that accuracy just not letting them settle in not letting them get too comfortable um, <sighs> look how strong that is he drops down on the one arm he just shook out <laughs> in a 90 degree lock <laughs> unreal isn't it right he starts the swing a bit like sean did hasn't got the length like paul hits the hole well and now just casually one arms it and untangles himself from the rope Unreal strength. He's not looking at all tired at the moment, but we know how burning this section is. No feet once you drop down there. No, moves like that as well, kind of a little bit polarizing in the climbing community, whether you love them or hate them, but the crowd absolutely loving it here. And great to see the athletes forced to be really, really confident and um, upsetting their rhythm again. You know, they aren't just able to climb through it. They're having to make different movements. Here, the fact that he's having to do that really dynamic movement, then shift gear into climbing down, getting into the really tricky section where we've lost some climbers now. 
Yeah, I mean, personally, I, I quite like that jump, I think. I was, I was thinking about it as you said it, and I, it's cool to see it on a lead route and, and also that transferable skills. Yeah, I've not my, made my mind up about it yet. I, I don't know if I like it so much. I like that the crowd love it, though, and it is changing the rhythm of the climb, but I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not my favorite move. Well, <laughs> let us know if you're watching at home what you think of this thing. You can comment and uh, message us and tell us. So always good to have your feedback on things. And he is resting now for a while on this big jug. And this move from that angle just looks ridiculous. You have to go all the way down to where your feet are. We saw Paul manage to stay on the jug up high, which definitely made the move a lot easier, but it also then meant he was super extended when he hit it, so potentially making the, the letting go part harder. Do Hyun here, he's just motoring through. He's so decisive and committing to the movements that when he's decided, once he's decided what he's doing, he's really strong through those movements. And chalking up a lot, actually. He is, yeah, he's taking his time on this. Has those crimps locked in. Big move up with the left. Very flexible climber with that high toe hook. Hits the heel. See here, he's put his toe much higher. Sean had his toe on the yellow volume just below, which meant he came up short on that next yellow volume up. It looked like he couldn't reach the method that he tried, but he did not try Do Hyun's method. So I think this is really smart climbing for him. Whether or not he, he realizes and that's why he made that decision, I don't know. He's just hit the left shoulder, a very, very small crimp, and we'll see him throw over the top to the yellow volume that's got a little jib on. Yeah, so he hits that hold. And keep an eye on the score as well. Paul Jemps still in the lead with 33 plus, but he's now getting about to be beaten by Dokan if he can do a couple more moves here. Paul didn't have that clip, so great that he's been able to make that. We'll see him push down on his right arm into that mantle position, potentially getting a little shake. Not looking as comfortable as I imagined he would here and not opting to stay there for too long. Yeah, my shoulders are screaming as I watch that. He's pressing once more. Okay, so we're seeing him drop back down, kind of compose himself, get a little bit more comfortable in that position. He's approaching the head ball. He knows the climbing's about to spice up an extra level. So yeah, it's great to see that he's kind of composed himself and taking some time to recover there. Well, a bit like Yanni, he's only got a minute left on the clock as well. We really nearly lost him there. His right hand slipped right down. You, you heard, I think, his coaches and his teammates step up the screaming because he so nearly fell off. It's a great recovery from him. It was indeed. And look, he's struggling now. Bumps that hand, trying to get towards the good bit of it. Gets a drop knee and a match. How is he still on? But then he falls. He's... I very much doubt he'll be awarded the plus for that. His body weight was coming down as his hand flailed up. Really worth a slap though, like why not reach up as you're coming down? He looks disappointed with that. I don't know if he'll know that he's in the hot seat right now with um, 39 points. He's, he's quite a lot higher up than Paul. Okay, somewhere back there is Serato Anraku. 16 and he strides out with purpose across the mat. Yeah, looking very, very focused. We said he maybe didn't have the best of bold rounds. I think he's looking for a bit of revenge here. Puffs that chalk in the air, just reminding himself of the sequences. It was quite a long time ago these athletes looked at the roots, about 5.35 exactly, and it's now coming up to 8.12. So he's, uh, he's had a bit of time away. Interesting that we say he didn't have the best of bold rounds. He finished fourth, but for him, coming off the back of winning the qualification or finishing first in qualification and in semi-finals. You know, finishing both isn't the best of bold rounds for him. So if you're looking at the results, don't feel like we're being harsh to him. No, I think I was, I think I was being unnecessarily harsh, <laughs> I think. I think I'm so used to these sort no, of positions. He, you know, his, his performance in Boulder wasn't as good as it was in semis. That's, that's undeniable. And he he wasn't happy with his performance in semi-finals for lead either. We saw him miss a clip and make a huge recovery. So to see him in this round now, I think he'll have actually a different mindset because it's almost like he's got something to prove coming into this. He said his hands felt cold. He said he had issues with clipping. And his words were that his climbing was imperfect. And he seems like an athlete that wants to give a perfect performance every time. So I, I think that's why we saw that focus in his eyes. He looked different to the way we've seen him previously, like a different energy about him. And he's so smooth through this first section, making very light work of all of this section. And just taking a little time to chill here. 
I think he's looking confident. Yeah, I think you're completely right. You've read that really well. He has got that attitude about him. And he's now on the jugs, resting. And he loves being on a lead rope as well. At only 16, it does feel like these younger athletes, they aren't specialists anymore because of the Olympics being a lead and boulder event. We've got that lead and boulder event next week to decide who gets those top, who, who finishes in the top three spots and who will get their Olympic tickets. Um, so yeah, with the younger athletes, it feels like they are just lead and boulder specialists, yeah, exactly. not one or the other. No, well, he makes the jump look really good and twists himself on the rope again. Paul, the only one to uh, be tall enough, seemingly tall enough to reach across with his feet and then kick off. I wonder if that in some ways was a disadvantage. It slowed his pace. He seemed to think about trying to do it statically. The route setter said it is possible to do that. Paul would be an athlete that would have been able to reach that. Serato, unlikely so. He didn't even seem to consider it. He just charged straight through that, not upsetting his pace of climbing. Whereas for Paul, it did change that. Yeah, it's a good point. And Adam Ondra later on, similar height. He might get caught into that trap too, but that's to come. Serato is looking casual as he looks down the clock. The clocks are facing up towards the athletes as well as out towards the audience, so the athletes can see easily when they're up on the wall. Gets a toe in, and hard to see, but I think he's into the pocket. Yeah, just making some adjustments there, making sure he's got it really, really solid so he can do this drop down. He looks casual here. His feet are not on anything. They are just smearing, just on the wall. All his weight's going through his arm right now. And now we see him start to use his foot, foot, uh, foot placements to kind of aid his arms a little bit. Yeah, he's up towards the first of the crimps. His toes are low here, but he's walking them up. Something that Sean didn't see, unfortunately. But Serato looking very comfortable here. That high toe seems a lot more effective. Yeah, it does. And he's checking the clock, but he has got a bit of time. He's currently resting on a hold that doesn't have a jib on. It's really sloping. Impressive that he's resting where we've seen other athletes struggling to even manage to stay on the wall. Sticky Serato, that's his nickname. He's so <laughs> good at holding on to stuff like that. All right, so he has the... Uh, He's wrapped his hand around the volume, makes the clip. And now he's got this mantly move to come with that shoulder press on the right arm. Yeah, we saw him do the wrap up to change it and then make the move to the left and then change it back to the wrap. Um, a great adjustment that he made there because I think it would have been really awkward to move left off that wrap. He went straight into the mantle, opting not to take that rest, which is interesting. It seems like he's got a time pressure. Like, he seems like he's feeling the time pressure when I, I don't think he needs to necessarily be, but he's ramping up the pace and not taking any rest through the section at all. It's a good point. He's got a lot of time left. Minute 48, and he's about to enter the head wall. But he is going quickly. Has the toe in. And he moves into the lead as well with that 40. Bumps the foot, scrubbing against the volume, and now finds a toe. Oh, he, that's powerful. It was powerful, and he was starting to fight there. You could see he was working through his hips to get his hips high, but then the pace and the style changes so significantly. Suddenly, he's standing on his feet. It looked like he really wanted to be in this head wall. He seemed more comfortable as soon as he rocked around, but now it seems to have got a lot harder. He hasn't clipped yet, but that cross through with his foot just saved him, and he's managed to make the clip. Yeah, I think he might have been trying to push on and then got in a better position and decided to make the clip. So let's see if he can get something back here for the top because he drops the rope again. So he readjusts, slaps left. He's back into fight mode. You could see his hips moving around, trying to help him figure out what the best position was there. I appreciate that this, this section was called the hip <laughs> section because they really need to move as, as well as they can here. He seemed happy. He seemed like he'd, he'd, he'd fought as hard as he could. Maybe not figuring out the correct sequence through that, but so hard to do when you are that pumped. Um, I don't know, he's looking up, he looks a little bit confused, but he did seem like he pushed right to the very end. He did, and uh, to let you know, Dokian Lee's score is being under appeal. So the Korean coaches are wanting to upgrade his score from 39 to 39 plus. So we'll see if that goes through. Yun Chang Song comes out, another Korean athlete here. Very, very young. Another 16-year-old. 
this vinyl has a, a variety of different ages, actually. Um, something we've not seen so much this season. Yeah, well, we've got the oldest, Adam Ondra, at 30 years and... Uh, sorry, Jakob Schubert, 32 years, 7 months, and then, yeah, 16 years old. So, huge difference between them. So, Yun Chang Song starts off, and the audience eerily quiet here. I think you were right when you said it earlier. They know that they should get through this bottom part. They're just waiting. But always oh, hand jammed, fantastic. Well, I said it wasn't a crack, it kind of is. That's awesome to see. Really unusual that he opted to hand jam there. <laughs> this guy is very confident on his hand jams, more so than the laybacks. Um, it's almost hard to believe for me. I don't know how anyone will be more comfortable on hand jam <laughs> than a layback. But yeah, he was very happy in there and I'm sure making a lot of fans. <laughs> Yeah, Quite a flex from him there. There's whole YouTube videos that are made whenever there's a crack, so uh, you guys go nuts out there. Right, well, he's through that section. Fun to see. And now let's see how he does this skip to the left. It feels like on the women's route we were tense from the get-go because it was quite insecure climbing, whereas with the men's, it seems to allow them to get into a little bit of a rhythm, maybe a few moves that might make them think. Do Hyun not opting to go faster at all, so solid through that movement that the route setters had intended to be more dynamic. He didn't even need to flick in the slightest, kept both feet on. And I think when he gets to this more dynamic move coming up, we'll see him move through it really smoothly. And then kind of the meat of the route starts to really kick in just before the head wall on these yellow kind of long volumes. It gets relentless quickly. This start section, not challenging them too much, but just tiring them out enough so that when they get to this really beefy section in the middle, they've not got a lot left. Oh, and he's fallen. Well, let's see a replay of that in a second because that was a very early fall from Yun Chan Song and that will leave him really down at surprising. the bottom. A really unfortunate slip. He did seem to keep swapping his feet around, um, maybe suddenly feeling quite nervous. I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, halfway through then, Ao Yurikuze comes out from Japan. Here to have him back in a comp. Ao had a really good season in 2022 and then coming into this year he's had some good results but maybe not results as good as you would expect from him I don't believe we've seen him in a finals this year so I'm sure he's really happy to be out here but we know he can give a really good performance and we've seen him fight so hard on a head wall so I do hope we get to see that again from out yeah, and a lead specialist so this is where he needs to shine to show the Japanese selectors he should belong in that team because it's so big so much talent in so there so competitive so he's into the uh, crack no, no hand jam. jam. <laughs> <laughs> to my delight and your disappointment. <laughs> I know, I just, I just know that the uh, climbing geeks out there are loving it. Stick a cam in it instead. Right, so he's a couple of clips in and out towards the pinch. And we know by now, pretty straightforward down low. But that sequence you can see in your camera is coming up. We know it's straightforward. And as I was saying previously, we expect athletes to kind of get through this quite quickly. But then we just had a huge surprise. True. So maybe not as straightforward as we imagined. No. And when it happens, you start to get a bit more nervous about certain sections. Yeah. And you can, I think you can feel that again. I talk a lot about the crowd and the atmosphere. And it's really hard to explain how that feels on the wall. Also... I think Al will have heard the reaction to Yun Chan's fall, so he knows that slips are possible. It changes how you feel going into it. Maybe it makes him feel good that he's like he knows he's confident and not going to make those mistakes. He also knows that he can definitely place higher than Yun Chan potentially, or he's worried that his slips are possible. Yeah, exactly. A lot going through his head right now, and the tension in the stadium right now is crazy. Everyone's eyes glued on the action. Two fingers into that pocket, and we begin this swing sequence. Oh, he just got that left hand in then. Oof. A very different style of jump there, kind of flicking the legs quite dramatically. Maybe not necessary, but it worked for him, and it doesn't matter that that move is over now. That didn't seem like he struggled with it at any point, just a very different style. Yeah, absolutely. Right, I bet well, that made a great photo. I bet it did, yeah. You can see, it's funny that you can see the photos that appear later on social media sometimes. All right, so he rests with a high left foot 
in order to get into that position. And remember, he needs to climb down from this point, and this casual one-armor is great. Tries to find a toe underneath, can't get it the first time, or the second. This is going to be sapping him, and he goes back for the rest. Yeah, so we've seen other athletes here um, cross their hand underneath, so their left hand to the pocket. I think he's going to make that adjustment now. Yeah, we see him go left hand. He's going toes above his head. This seems like the more effective way to drop down to the pocket. The pockets are really good. They're very positive. Yes, he's only got two fingers in each, but for these climbers, that's not going to challenge them too much. So just a little bit of... Um, like a wobble for him in reading beta there. Again, just coming up short, maybe not finding his flow just yet. It seems like he's making some very small mistakes, but they don't seem to be costing him too much energy, luckily. Yeah, I loved how he used that left foot there as, a, as an intermediate to readjust back to the <laughs> crimp. All right, so big move up to that pinch-like feature out to the right, and he's eyeing up the next series of holds. Gets the toe locked in. Gets the toe locked in, looks to the right, is going to step his toe higher to the blue hold. Exactly what he needs to do. Hasn't yet hit the jib, so the black um, the black hold that you can see on this yellow volume, his hand's almost on it there. He'll feel it with his pinky, so he'll know exactly where he needs to readjust to. He's obviously not struggling because he's not gone to it here. So he must feel very comfortable in that position. A good sign that he's got some beans left for the next section. Yeah, and he'll need it because it's tough bits coming up. It was fascinating that, as you said, that pinky on it. I thought he'd immediately bump into it, mm -hmm. but he just chose not to. All right, so up underneath. Makes the long clip. We've got this. Oh, no, he drops down the rope, deciding better of it. Wanting a different position to clip from. Yeah, I'm not surprised he changed that clipping position. It was a very tense position to choose to try and clip from. Um, it's almost like he got sucked into thinking about the clip and realized he didn't need to make it just yet. So, starts this rock up. He's got the crimp in front of his face, right by his nose almost. Opt into shake, which is, I think, a great move here because it does, it is a really good position to rest in. You're not kind of taxing your arms at any point just there, but bringing our eyes back to the time, he is on 130. He does need to keep climbing. He can't rest for very long now. Yeah, and he is breathing hard and a bit of a shake going on right now. And he misses the clip. Yeah, he could be running out. Those elbows coming up. It'll be interesting to see if he tries to reclip. I think he's gone. He does. So outside, oh no, into bronze medal position with that 38. Dohan score not upgraded to the plus. He stays on 39. And Serato out in front on 48. And Al score adjusted there to 38 plus. Yeah, he looked really, really tired all of a sudden. He was resting quite low down, looking quite fresh, not using the jib like we said. It looked like he had a lot more to give. And then suddenly as he hit these higher yellow holds, it gets really powerful and quite awkward. Alex Magos walks onto the stage to a huge reaction from the crowd. One of those figures in climbing, you just recognize him wherever he goes. And <laughs> rightly so, what a year he's having. He's done three World Cups. He's been in three finals, stood on two podiums. He's had a second, a third, and a fourth. There's only one number missing <laughs> from that top four. Whether we'll see that or not today is yet to be seen. Alex can give an amazingly inspiring performance at times, but we do see him make mistakes. I hope we don't see that today. He's seeming on a new level this year. He seems to keep stepping it up. He is an Olympian and he will be looking to get an Olympic ticket, whether it's here or at future events. Absolutely, yeah. And look, he's hand jamming as well. He uh, spends a lot of time in your neck of the woods up in Sheffield, so maybe he's learned that from you. <laughs> He'll be making a lot of fellow Sheffield climbers <laughs> proud right there. <laughs> so he reaches underneath, bumps out with the right hand. And he is underway. Yeah, he is looking good. He's got. Uh, he posts a lot of videos about his training, and it's pretty crazy to watch him and Sebastian Halenke. So not Sebastian. Um, I can't, can't forget his name. I'm going I'm to be quiet. But yeah, lots of training videos. He works hard in the gym, this man. He does. He's a big fan of training. He loves to train. He kind of feels much worse when he takes multiple rest days. He actually messaged me earlier on today saying, when do you want to go training while we're here? I'm like, you're at the World Championships, Alex. Focus on the climbing. But no, training is it's in his DNA. It's what he does. It's what he loves. And you can see it paying off in his climbing. This year, he seems to have changed something up. He seems to be stepping up the pace a little bit, both in Boulder and lead. And yeah, 
I'd say he's one of the favourites that you will see getting an Olympic ticket at some point, whether it is at this event. There are multiple other opportunities to qualify for the Olympics. It's not just here. We'll only see three men and three women get their boulder and lead ticket and two men and women in speed get their ticket. So, yeah, it's a long road ahead for these athletes. I was so excited to commentate that moment when they get that. Uh, I wasn't doing this job back in the day, so I, I personally can't wait for that. Right. Oh, a risky move from Alex there. Yeah. He went left hand up, not right hand for the match like we've seen most of the other athletes do. He seems a little flustered all of a sudden, but hopefully he can have a little moment to calm down. Yeah, but he has. He dragged that left hand down the slope and tried to stop a bit of a momentum there. And now he starts the swing. Let's watch this. So big flick out, huge from Alex. Alex, not normally a fan of this kind of move. I wonder if it was playing on his mind on those few previous moves. So hopefully now he can get into a good rhythm, find his flow again. Interesting to see him kind of not looking comfortable, especially on a one arm on a pocket. Like that's Alex's happy place normally. So to see him kind of take that swing a little bit more edgy than we'd normally see um, and also a big rest here from him turning to check the clock there's a lot of time gone already but he doesn't seem to be struggling with time right now yeah well he's got the bit maybe he was not looking forward to out of the way now so after this rest he'll launch downwards which is a weird thing to say but that's what he's going to do so he's got He's going back for another rest. Ideally, he wants to take his left hand into the pocket, then get two toe hooks where his right hand is like right now. So his, where his hands are, his toes want to end up, and he wants to be totally upside down and almost a bat hang, but his hands will still be on, so he won't be entirely <laughs> resting on his feet. Well, that was the move Sean was talking about. And, of course, it's hard to see that pocket. It's not tick marked that I can see. And he's a trust it's there. All right, well, he's done the sort of complicated bit of climbing. Uh, let's see what he can do. Has he got, how much has he got left in those arms? He's in sixth currently, aiming for 48, and he's on 27. Puffing his cheeks, he's having to try hard here. He looked relieved to get through that section, but almost surprised at how tired he was. Yeah, I think you're right. He's uh, having to work here. His toes locked in. Hits the pinch nicely. And left elbow slightly raised. He's doing a very different sequence here to the other athletes. Hands in a, in a different order, but it's making it work. He's gonna flick his right hand into the palm. Hopefully he can press into this, make this clip, get something back, and we'll see a good fight from Alex on this next section. But he looks more tired than I would expect him to look at this point. Yeah, he is. So a battle for Alex Magos here. He does love a crimp though, so hopefully he can get happy on there. <laughs> Yeah, he locks it off, hits the shoulder, he moves his intermediate, goes into another crimp up on the wall. That was the move Dokan struggled on. The clip is behind his head, though. He's ignoring it at the moment. And he's still ignoring it, so trying to get into a better position, but he might just be trying to get points here. It's a long way now towards his right, this clip. He has a heel on, he's managing to chalk. He's going to try and think about what he can do. Impressive flexibility from Alex there, almost in, in full split, but he's going to have to reverse, I think, to be able to make this clip. He's crossing over. I'm not sure if he'll be awarded that hold because you only get the points for the hold where you can clip from. So unless he could clip from that point, because he doesn't have the clip behind him in, he potentially won't be awarded that hold. It looked like he got into a position where he just wasn't able to make the clip. OK, well, let's see. I hope we see more of this head walk as Jakob Schubert comes out with a big smile on his face. I think he's going to enjoy every second of this. And the crowd. They are loving Jakob coming out. Yeah, you asked me a question of uh, who I think might win, and I said, well, look, I enjoy watching Jakob climb, and I really do. He's just got that... Oh, nearly fell off the stage there. Um, <laughs> I thought he did, anyway. It's, he's right on the edge of it, trying to peer back. It's hard to see. It's a very overhanging wall. But what confidence. He's come out and he's looked straight at that head wall. That's where he wants to be heading. That's a good point. Yeah, we know where Jakob's headed. Right. No mistakes, please, Jakob. Keep this together. See what you can do. Crack coming up first. It's, it's rare that we do see Jakob make mistakes because he's so experienced. Um, I really hope we get to see a good fight from him. It's something special when Jakob kind of enters that beast mode, you know, when he's really pushing it and he's fighting hard. He does seem to be able to give absolutely everything on a lead wall. He really does, yeah. When he starts screaming, you know he means business. 
First of all, he's got a, a new school jump to get through. And that unique sequence in the middle when he drops down to the pocket. That's coming up, but he's taking his time down low, climbing his way into this route. He's got crimps to come. Lovely shot there. A bit of foreground as Alec, as uh, Jakob goes up. And that tongue, he always does that, sort of like rotates it around <laughs> in his mouth. I just did it there. I know you can't see it. At home. <laughs> yeah, it just shows that he's so focused and so absorbed in his climbing. He's not thinking about what he looks like. He doesn't care what he looks like. Nope. He is an athlete that he gives a hundred percent and you can see that he can enter this state of flow very easily it seems, but that's something that he's practiced. It's something that he's trained for. Looking slightly hesitant here. I wonder if he read the route with Alex. He looked like he was gonna go left hand, changed his mind to go right hand, showing his majority. Um, the left hand definitely seemed risky for Alex, which maybe is what unsettled him. Jakob, not not upset by it at all, not looking to struggle on that at all. Yeah, so now he starts the swings, hits the hole well, and he's through that part of the route, that risky move. Jakob's again someone I wouldn't think would be too psyched about that move, but didn't seem to slow him down and the fact that we haven't seen any athletes drop the move I think will will be a good thing uh, well the athletes sitting in the hot seat Serato in that hot seat currently he's got the high point good resting position from Jakob there using the top of his foot to press into that jug like hold it's the rope running through the quick drop and he's got this drop down move to come he needs to reach underneath towards the pocket We've seen quite a few different methods of this through here. He seems to look really comfortable on that stark section, so I'm quite surprised he's taken a longer rest as he is here. He's he is an experienced climber, so I, I don't think he'll have an issue with time. I don't think he's going to struggle with pacing himself, but just interesting that he is taking that long rest. Maybe that jug is just too good to let go of, like you said earlier. Yeah, well, he's quickly through this rotation as well. That was really strong on that right hand. It was, and it was, he was able to be so strong because he threw his hips, really twisted them round onto his arm and put all his weight in the right position so that, so that he was able to reach through. All right, so Jakob micro shakes as he goes hip. It got the toe, gets the toe in. There's that jib to come, which has caused a few problems, that jib, but Jakob hits it first time of asking. Crimps those fingers in and double toes. Nice with that section with the kind of stepping his toes through. It's, it's hard to see how difficult that is. A lot of tension required. It just shows how good he is on toe hooks. Really seems like he did read the route with Alex. He's doing the same sequence here that we've not seen any other athletes do. Opting to go left hand up to the yellow volume. So there's a little black jib under there, crossing under. It seems like a great way to do it actually. Not the way the route setters intended. So potentially Alex and Yakov finding a better sequence than the route setters did. There we go. Teaching them a thing or two. Out again. Yeah, well, the route setters <laughs> do what? It's worth remembering as well. They set these and then they sit there avidly watching the climbers go. Now, Jakob presses up with that right hand. So overhanging there, isn't it? Look at his face on the wall. He's eyeing that foothold. Brings his feet up. He's a couple of moves away from the head wall now. Jakob often wears his emotions on his sleeve. You, know, you can see what's going on. You could see him puffing there. He's starting to try. We're not in like the hurt zone, as I would say yet. <laughs> He's not grimacing, but I don't think it'll be long before he is because this climb is relentless. Love that hurt zone thing. It's <laughs> such a good way of describing it. Well, look, those circles indicate where the athlete's got to you before, so we know what he's got to do. Great to see him shaking there. Many people, many athletes we've seen struggle on this section, so he's made the clip, which is really crucial. He's going to head to the left. Um, he's, he does look like he's got a lot more to give, using the toe hook there, very, very strong on that toe hook, and now he's got a crimp that he can start really pulling on the holds again. Well, he's already in silver medal position. Can he get a few moves higher here? And if there's a man you want to see on a head wall, it's going to be Jakob. <laughs> there's definitely a few others to go who know how to fight on a head wall, so there's more action to come. But Jakob, it's a familiar place for him. He's been in this position before. He's won many competitions. I don't even know how many. Um, he's a World Cup winner. He's a previous world champion. He's going to fight with everything he's got. He's going to have to get a bit of a jog on. 37 seconds on the clock. He did just look down, so he does know that. And I think that's why we're seeing him get 
a bit of a motor going on now. Yeah, the audience trying to push him forwards as well. They know what's at stake here. 25 seconds to go. Gets the penult second last clip in. Yeah, he's still got one clip to go. It doesn't seem like he's got enough time. It'll be really unfortunate to see him time out, so I hope he can keep fighting and get moving. Well, we watched Yanya really push earlier. Can Jakob do a similar thing? Ten seconds, it's not going to be enough time, you know. Eight seconds, he's almost out. Couple of holes, he needs to get higher, taps that. And that did do enough to bump him up due to count back. And I think we might see him be awarded the plus. He did seem to be moving. Potentially his hips were moving upwards. Um, we'll see if that score changes. He has been awarded the plus. So, yeah, he is currently in first position, which means regardless of the next two climbers, he is on the World Championship podium. Awesome work from Jakob. And Guaranteed a medal. Very happy with that, as he should be. <laughs> Honestly, I hope he never retires. There's no need. He just keeps on going, keeps winning medals, and he's got another one. OK, well, from one legend to another legend, Adam Ondra runs onto the stage. Someone who is used to winning on the biggest of occasions. Again, another climber who knows when to turn it up for the big stage. One of my favorite climbing moments of all time was seeing him take the World Championship lead gold in Paris in 2016. Oh, it was an amazing moment. He knows how to perform. He knows how to perform under pressure. He did say he didn't necessarily like the semi-finals route. He found it quite awkward, quite uncomfortable. Um, he said he got lucky, which I find interesting because it seemed like that route really did challenge the climbers in different ways. So interesting he put it like that. But I personally don't think it's luck. I think it's down to ability, preparation, training. This guy is arguably the best climber in the world from what he's done both in competition and on rock over many years but he keeps turning up he wants to keep showing that he's still up there with the best we'll see who's crowned the best tonight but adam wants to be that guy he does indeed and look at this Jakob talking to alex about the route down as they watch adam go upwards i think adam with a hand jam there as well there's this legendary story of him teaching the japanese team how to jam after a minor in crack so yeah he knows his way around that i am not surprised in the slightest that adam opted for the hand jam <laughs> And Adam, one of the taller climbers. It'll be interesting to see how he does that dyno move in the middle. His preparation, as you said, has been good for this. He's been building towards this moment, wants to uh, get a ticket here, get that out of the way so he can just concentrate on training. A risky way of doing it, and he makes it work on the big jug. Seemingly risky, but almost not so much because he was so confident. There was no doubt in his mind that he was going to hit that. So it definitely looks risky. Um, but for Adam, I'm, I'm not sure it was. And I think maybe that means that when he gets to this dynamic move that he's coming towards right now, I think we'll see him move through it very, very quickly. I, I'm not sure he'll try and kick his foot out, but maybe the temptation will be too much. <laughs> will he get sucked into a feet first move? And we'll find out in a sec. He's got that coming. Pockets are there. You can see it. Yellow pocket, first of all, near where his elbow looks like to be. This year, we're seeing athletes, like I said earlier, they are making really interesting choices about what events they go to. We've only seen Adam come to one World Cup this season in Villar, where he finished second. So, oh, really Adam on. He has gotten foot first. Yeah, he's been sucked into the feet first. Like we said, he's a taller athlete, but seems to be maybe changing his mind, kicking off the hold, flicking over. And an easy jump for him, yeah. I think he just used it to get a bit more momentum. But certainly for a moment, I think he considered it. He got a heel in for a sec. He did, and I I mean, if it was me and <laughs> I was able to reach my feet across, I would probably attempt to go more statically. I'm not going to lie. It would be the safer way. But what I expect happened is when he kicked that foot across, it was obvious to him that the easiest method would be to flick, would be to go fast. And that's why he made that decision really, really quickly. Unlike Paul, who seemed to try and figure it out, spent a lot longer realizing that, Adam was much more decisive and it showed his experience. Yes, it definitely did. All right, well, he's through that part, gets a toe in. He's good at timing things, so let's see when he decides to move forwards. And now he's dropping down into straight to a fig four. And that is a big drop in. It is, but again, a move that Adam loves to do. He's he's really well versed in using many different techniques when he's climbing. As we can see, he likes to use the most efficient method, it seems. Oh, hang on a sec, though. He read that completely wrong. Didn't have the toes in, went through with the right. Oh, I am so gutted for Adam. 
Ah, oh, so is he. He knows. He just made that mistake. He made a huge mistake there, and that is something we very rarely see from Adam. The crowd giving him a huge applause. They oh. know that's not what he wanted. He is so disappointed, understandably so. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't quite know where to look, does he? He just shakes his head up at the wall. That is heartbreaking for Adam. And Toby Roberts is ready to go. For Toby, right now he's just been sat in isolation. He has been waiting for Adam's attempt, which has been over a lot quicker. I hope this hasn't flustered Toby. You know, he'll have a routine, whether it's put his shoes on, put his chalk on, the liquid chalk, have a sip of water, whatever that might be. That's all had to happen much faster because Adam's attempt was cut short by his mistake. So a different setup to what Toby would have expected, I imagine. I don't think he would have guessed Adam would have fallen off that low. He'll have heard the reaction from the crowd. He'll have heard that Jakob got high up and potentially also Serato. So yeah, I think Toby knows that mistakes are possible. I really hope they're not in his mind as he's climbing and we get to see him get to that head wall. Jakob and Toby probably are my two favorite climbers <laughs> to see fight in the head wall and Adam of course I'm so sad we didn't get to see that but all eyes are on Toby right now yeah this is it for the young man first got a medal in Edinburgh last year and he's progressed from there his mum and dad are watching in the audience and his dad especially travels the world with him and uh, he will be very nervously pacing go and watch Toby's vlogs as well if you want to see some behind the scenes World Cup travel action all right Toby underway Suddenly again, that audience, that feeling in the stadium changes. It's nervy now. Yeah, Adam's slip there has changed how this atmosphere feels. And the crowd, this is their last climber. They know it is. This suddenly means a lot more. It's been a long final, it feels like. And it's all led up to this moment. The World Championships is Toby's for the taking. No one has topped this climb. We haven't seen anyone reach the top. I think Toby wants it. He's going to be fighting hard. He's, he's so good at unlocking that extra try hard that so many people aren't able to kind of access. And checking the time there, he's got lots of time on the clock, but being very smart in doing that when he's in such a comfortable position. And it's making our podium a form here. Jakob Schubert guaranteed at least silver, Serato at least bronze. Only Toby can make a difference. Alex sitting in bronze currently. And Toby, again, a bit like Adam did, hesitating on this move. Where's with the right hand? Yeah, I do wonder whether they all read it to go left hand and then they get there and suddenly it's a bit different. Um, it didn't seem to slow him down too much or take too much energy away from him. He's looking to think about clipping here. I imagine he may go to the next hold in order to make that clip. He hasn't, so he's made it before going to the pocket. Should allow him to get a good flow going into this next section. All right, he's into those pockets. Now starts the swing. Slight hesitation on the first swing. Now starting to drive, but a bit jerky from him. Oh, and he has slipped. Oh, and he's held it. This is, he's and he has fallen. He didn't ever look comfortable with the swing. No, he really didn't. It looked like he just didn't find a flow with his hips and he ripped out of that left pocket, almost saved it with the right. And you could see him really fighting to stay on the wall. That is a disappointing climb for Toby. You can see it in his face. He's a young athlete. He's got so much more to give this sport. But let's remember, Jakob Schubert has just won gold medal at the World Champs. He has and... A not the way you would have wanted to win it, perhaps, but Def like... Definitely not, but a very deserved win. Jakob will make his way over to the left. We get confirmation of the scores. So Jakob Schubert wins with a 48 plus. Serato and Raku only a plus in it with 48. Alex Magos in third, bronze medal position with a 40. Dohyan Lee, Ao Yurikuza, Paul Jem, Sean Bailey, Adam Ondra after an early slip, Toby after an early slip, and Yun Chang Song after an early slip. Alex Magos joking around with someone there. So Alex with the bronze medal, laughing with Marco there. Another podium, another medal for Alex. Yeah, pretty good that.
I wonder who'll get, I wonder if Alex will keep that, put it on his uh, bookshelf or if he's going to give that away. Serato, well, Jakob said that if he can teach this young man something, when Serato is uh, impressing in the years to come, then Jakob will have given something back. Now, Jakob Schuber still has some climbing left in him before he does that. And Serato, for sure. I will stand on many, many podiums, you would imagine, in his time. Right now, he's got a silver. And finally, the man of the hour. The man with a true fighting spirit, Jakob Schubert, takes the gold in lead. Well deserved. And his Olympic campaign still wide open. Huge congratulations to all three of those athletes and to everyone who competed in this lead competition. And with that, the individual events for Boulder and lead draw to a close. Speed to come, para climbing to come, Boulder and lead combined competitions later on.